Hello everybody, it's Hater, and welcome back to another Destiny 2 build video. And now that we've completed the solo flawless build for the Warlock, which you guys absolutely knocked out of the ballpark with all the love, it's time to talk about the Titan solo flawless build. And don't worry, Hunter Mains, I will have your build out next after this one. But if you want to stay up to date and catch that video when it goes live, then remember to like the video, leave a comment down in the comment section if there's anything you want to see me cover in the future or any ideas that you have. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you'll be up to date when that video goes out and then some. To start off and talk about the build, we're actually going to be using two subclasses, one in the first half of the dungeon and then one in the other half of the dungeon. As for the entire build though, it's not going to be changing too much since we're only changing one mod out. For the first half of the dungeon, we're actually going to be using the exact same build that I used in my Warlock video. The only difference is that we'll be using Bottom Tree Sunbreaker leading up to the first boss, which is the Ogre. As for the overall build, we'll be using a combination of survivability mods like Well of Life and Protective Light, so that whenever we get stacks of charge with light, Protective Light is going to act as a safety net for whenever our shields break and give us 10 seconds of 4x damage resistance. And then Well of Life will give us 10 seconds of continuous healing the moment we pick up a Solar Elemental Well. To get both the stacks of charge with light and the Solar Elemental Wells, we're going to be using both Taking Charge and Elemental Armaments for the build. So Taking Charge will give us stacks of charge with light whenever we pick up Orbs of Power, and Elemental Armaments will spawn a Solar Elemental Well since we are using Bottom Sunbreaker when we match our weapon with our subclass type. I'll explain a little bit more about this mod when we actually get into the loadout. Then the final mod of the build, which will help us out a lot in the long run since we're using elemental armaments, is going to be Font of Might, so that whenever we pick up our elemental well matching our subclass type, it gives us 10 seconds of 25% damage to that element typing, which in the long run will speed up killing a lot of the adds we have to deal with. After we've reached the ogre part of the dungeon, at this point we're going to be swapping over to Top Tree Void Titan and use Bubble. Also meaning we're going to have to swap out Well of Life. And to make things uniform, the best mod to put there now that we are Void is going to be Well of Tenacity, giving us 5 seconds of damage resistance the moment we pick up a Void Elemental Well. This also paired with Elemental Armament is just going to help us double down even more on survivability. Also finishing the overall mods for the build. Moving over to the loadout, I really want to point out that I don't personally enjoy optimizing my loadouts heavily around weapons because I really want to make the builds as usable as possible to anyone that watches the video. But because this is a video talking about how to solo the dungeon or even solo flawless this dungeon, I am going to be talking about weapons with certain roles that you should look for, and I will mention where to get them if you don't have them. In the kinetic slot, we're going to be using a scout rifle with explosive payload. Any scout rifle that you have with explosive payload will do, but if I could recommend one or two of them, I personally really enjoy using my night watch with rapid hit and explosive payload, which you can get from world drops. But if you want to get one that's super duper easy to get and possibly better than my role, then you can grab the one from the new light campaign, which is curated with overflow and explosive payload. If you happen to not have either of these though, then the Hung Jury from Nightfalls are also a great option. Over at the energy slot is where this is going to get interesting because as I stated before, we're going to be using elemental armaments to get either our solar well or our void well. And because the artifact mod particle deconstruction is so prominent in the meta right now, we're going to be using two fusion rifles in our energy slot. For the first half of the dungeon, we'll be using a Cartesian coordinate with at least Vorpal weapon. This is by far the most broken fusion rifle in the entire game, and it's solar. If you don't happen to have it, you could focus Umbral Ingrams from Season of the Splicer called Shock Trooper. This will basically give you a 1 in 2 chance to get Cartesian, but if you don't have Season of the Splicer, it is a world drop. The one that I use the most and is my personal favorite is Lead from Gold with Vorpal weapon and Accelerated Coils. You can go for something else in that first perk slot, I just think Lead from Gold is the best because picking up heavy ammo will also give this weapon ammo. Then when we get over to the Ogre boss from that point onward, we're going to be swapping this fusion rifle over to the Ritual fusion rifle No Composure which is Void, allowing us to proc elemental armaments now with a Void subclass. As for the perks to choose on it since we have the option to move them around, what I personally recommend using are Feeding Frenzy with High Impact Reserves. You'd also experiment a little bit with Reservoir Burst, but that's up to you. 
If you happen to not have Null Composure though, you can still earn it through the quest line called A Sacred Fusion. I also completed this when it came out, so you could check Banshee for the quest line, or it could be an abandoned quest over at the Postmaster in the kiosk to the left of it. Then finally, on the heavy weapon, we're going to be using Sleeper Simulant because this is the most powerful linear fusion rifle we have in the entire game. Especially since this thing just got a buff to its catalyst, giving it another bullet to its magazine. With Sleeper, you're going to be dealing right around 125,000 damage per shot while we're fighting the bosses in the dungeon. So if you don't have it, I highly recommend that you pick it up from the exotic kiosk in the tower. Thus concluding the weapons of the loadout. Over at the armor, however, we're going to be using two different exotics for the build. While we're Sunbreaker doing the first half of the dungeon, I found the exotic slot to be more preference than anything. You could use something like Heart of the Inmost Light. You could use Dune Marchers. In the footage in the background, I ran Path of the Burning Steps, but feel free to experiment with whatever you feel comfortable with. Then for the second half of the dungeon, where we swap over to Bubble, we'll be using Helm of Saint-14, so whenever we enter and leave our bubble, we'll gain an overshield keeping us alive in any damage phase. On top of that, all the adds that run inside of our bubble, specifically when we're fighting the ogre, will get blinded upon entering. Now that we've covered literally everything there is to cover for the build, let's move over to my Titan and show you an example of where all the mods will go for the loadout. Starting off with the helmets, and I say helmets because I'm using two of them. For when I'm in the first half of the dungeon, I have a solar helmet with Well of Life on it and two ammo finders for both linear fusion rifle and fusion rifle. However, when I reach the first boss of the dungeon, I'm going to swap over to Void and put Helm of Saint-14 on. On it, I have it as Void with Well of Tenacity and the same mods as previous, a Linear Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder and a Fusion Rifle Ammo Finder. Next up over at the arms, I've got these as Void with Protective Light at the end and a Linear Fusion Rifle Loader just so I can speed up with Sleeper Simulant in damage phases. Moving over to the chest piece, we're going to be doing the same thing as my Warlock video and use two chest pieces of different element. The reason behind this is we're going to have one of them as Arc and then one of them as Void, so we have the Elemental Resist mods for them. Because for everything besides the Ogre Room, we're going to be using two Arc Resist mods on an Arc chest piece with Font of Might at the end, and then swap it over while we're fighting the Ogre to a Void chest piece with two Void Resist mods instead. Now you don't have to do this, but I recommend it because the Ogre can be relatively relentless with his eye beams And the two Arc Resists are great for the Sparrow Racing part onward. Finally, on my boots, I'm going to be explaining this the same way as I did for the helmet. While I'm using Path of the Burning Steps, I have it as Solar, with Taking Charge at the end, a Recuperation, and an Ammo Scav of my choice. When it's time to swap my armor out at the ogre part of the dungeon, I'm going to put on a pair of void boots that are also using taking charge, but this time with better already and an ammo scav of my choice. Then finally, on my class item, I'm using this as solar. It can be any energy you have on your armor, and I'm using elemental armaments at the end with particle deconstruction. Overall, guys, that's going to be the build for the dungeon. If you have any questions about anything, then please leave them down in the comments. And before I head off and let you guys try to solo this for yourselves, I have a few tips that I'd like to give you while you're running it. The first tip is to abuse the fact that you gain your super instantly the moment you pick up 10 Burden by Riches stacks. This trick can be applied in the first part of the dungeon, the ogre part of the dungeon, the fallen shield, and the final boss of the dungeon. For the first part of the dungeon, you can pop your super, kill all of the adds, dunk at the crystal, and then do it all again. On the ogre boss is when it starts getting interesting. Because the moment you pick up the Scorch Cannon from right under the platform, you can shoot it into the room and then walk in, lay a bubble, kill all of the adds, and dunk at the crystal with a fresh super. For the Fallen Shield part, you can lay your bubble on top of the crystal, kill the adds, and then have a fresh bubble for whenever you need to panic button it. And then finally, over at the final boss, you realistically won't use it as often, but something you can do with the Invis Vandal that drops 10 of the Burden by Riches stacks, you can lay a bubble beforehand and then melt them down and pick it up. Or you could just lay your bubble before you pick up Burden by Riches stacks in general. Again, guys, if you have any questions or for tips and tricks about the dungeon, please leave them down in the comments and I can help you out best I can. But that is going to be it for me. I will catch you guys in the next build video. Bye bye.